The potential danger of playing high school football is once again on the minds of parents across the state. Following two students who sustained critical spinal cord injuries during games and a Union County football player who died after suffering a head trauma while returning a kickoff. Well, it's all leading to questions over whether the current rules and safety protocols in place are enough. Ted Goldberg reports. Hello. Hi. When Jason Christofiak played high school football at Colonia 20 years ago, concussions weren't taken as seriously. Now, the former high school player is a sports medicine physician, and concussions are a major concern, from Pop Warner to the NFL. Looking back, I think that there was definitely more of that, hey, you're fine, it's okay to go back in if you feel good, don't worry about it. Now it's different. If you have a head or neck injury, there is no okay, we're going to see what happens. Christofiak is the head physician for Rutgers football. He says research and rule changes have helped athletes reduce the risk of sustaining a serious injury while playing. We're still at the tip of the iceberg, in my opinion, but we know a lot more. So we have these different protocols in a way of mitigating you know, the, the risk of getting someone back to play too soon. That can cause them to be at risk for another head injury or another neck injury. Football may be safer, but there's always a risk. Over the last month, players at Keyport and St. John Vianney High Schools suffered spinal cord injuries during games. And in September, Linden sophomore Xavier McLean died after an in-game head injury. Christofiak says those serious injuries can happen, but they're relatively rare, and he still supports football. Sport is a really big part of our society. It's a big part of not just our physical health, but also our mental health. So I think then some of the discussion around, you know, should football, you know, be an entity in high school, which has come up, I disagree with. Christine Grease is a board-certified physician in brain injury medicine. She thinks tackle football is fine for high school kids, but not for anyone younger than that. As they develop, if there is constant subconcussive blows, repetitive head injuries, bumps to the head, uh, even in the child, then we know that that actually is a cocktail and a recipe for disaster in hormonal development later down the line. Four years ago, former Assemblywoman Valerie Veneri Huddle sponsored a bill that would ban tackle football in New Jersey for kids younger than 12. Critics argue that it would lead to more serious injuries since kids couldn't practice proper tackling technique. Greece doesn't see it that way. You can actually begin by building up that foundation properly, the running, the speed, the balance, the eye movements, um, and then you can build up to the tackle when you have the muscle strength. And remember, they need to hit puberty to actually have the muscle strength. Kids, when they know how to tackle, they know they don't have a built up core. They know their quads are not strong. So what do they do? They tackle with their upper body. That bill to ban youth football didn't get a vote. But the New Jersey State Interscholastic Athletic Association made rule changes to reduce full contact practice drills. These physicians agree with those rule changes and say another big part of safety is athletes knowing their limits and recognizing when they should sit out. Children are um, notorious for undermining a lot of their symptoms and downplaying those symptoms on impact testing. There's a lot of individuals who have a lot of aspirations of going from high school and getting a scholarship, playing at the D1 level, eventually becoming a professional or an elite athlete. So the idea is not to miss any playing time. As physicians learn more about concussions and serious injuries from football, we can expect more rule changes and different injury protocols in the future. For NJ Spotlight News, I'm Ted Goldberg.